Okay, good off here. Welcome everyone to the Coochie County Board of Commissioners regular meeting for Tuesday, March 28, 2023. Would you please help me open with the pledge? <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, everyone. First order of business is to approve the proposed agenda with additions and or deletions. We have a couple of additions today under sheriff's business uh, will be an addition uh, for a DNR boat grant. We'll put that as item B2 and under complex we will place you Dean after uh, environmental services if that's okay. I will accept the motion. I'll make a motion. A second. Thank you, Commissioner Roach. Thank you, Commissioner Hill. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Next up is to approve the minutes from the March 21st, 2023 regular meeting. I'll make a motion. Thank you, Commissioner Hill. I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Roach. Any discussion on the minutes? Looks good. Uh, hearing no discussion, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next up is financial business. Uh, Chair will accept a motion to for items A, B, and C. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Commissioner Roach. I'll say. Thank you, Commissioner Hill. Any discussion on claims? Hearing no discussion, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Next item is to approve the revisions to the 2023 committee list. Um, I know we have some stuff noted in there. <coughs> some temporary fill-ins here and there that will be rediscussed when uh, we have the fourth commissioner and then again uh, when we have the other vacancy filled. So um, for now, that's Kind of what it looks like we're just trying to cover as, as many of the bases as we can between the three of us here so far and and uh, and that just kind of notes that uh in there so uh, everybody is it look okay for everyone yep Mr. Right. chair if i could point out one thing yes. we do have on here also to add teddy pierce to the safety committee okay he was interested in joining that absolutely and then just replacing um, um county engineer trent nicholson with our past county engineer And we have the witness things she's already planned. Note those changes. Um, if the revisions to the committee list looks good, I will accept the motion to accept. I'll make a motion. Thank you, Commissioner Hill. I will second. Thank you, Commissioner Roach. Any discussion on the committee lists? Hearing no discussion, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Uh, next up is to adopt a resolution to move forward with new jail construction, uh, step two of two. Uh, and we have Kent here from ICS, uh, if, if you have any, and we also have Natalie Hopp uh, with ICS as well. Um, and the county is, with this resolution, will be officially moving forward uh, with a new jail facility. Um, this kind of gets everything kicked off and gets the planning stages going and, and gets the uh, uh, the plans kind of drawn up and everything and then I think we'll go up for, it sounded like for bids, hopefully first part of next year, is that kind of a... Yeah, it takes six to nine months for all the drawings to be complete, all the construction drawings and that. And then typically what you want to do is you want to go out for bids in the first quarter of the year so when the construction companies and that are all filling their books that's usually when the best rates are available. If you go later in the summer, then they got to start adding overtime costs to all the jobs. So you want to go first quarter if possible. So the intent would be is to put the bids out uh, in the January, beginning of February, and then have them back to the commission for review and acceptance uh, would be uh, later in February. Excellent. And we're going to, we're going to kind of planning on how we're going to keep everyone informed here. We're working with Kent and ICS and, 
and uh, Chair Headland and stuff about uh, getting these public notices out there and when we have information to present. You know, we're, we're hopefully planning, you know, public meetings over the course of, of the year when we have some information to share. So right now it's pretty preliminary. We have some pictures and some drawings and some numbers. Uh, maybe when we get some graphs of, of what this will really kind of be, uh, then we will more likely have a public meeting at a, at a later date here, uh, maybe early summer, mid-summer, something like that, when there's a few people around. So. Yeah, because the facility is licensed by the Department of Corrections, they have to approve the floor plan and they have to approve all the plans. Okay. So we do our work here, then we got to send it down to the state, they got to approve it and come back before anything can move forward. So that would be the time to, to have better inform the public, I guess. Okay. Well, maybe later in the year then, let's put, <laughs> put it. So. And, and, that, and that's fair. We'll, 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 we'll definitely keep the public informed here what's going on and kind of the timeline of, of how this is all going to pan out. So. Um, but is there anything else, Kent, you'd like to add? No, that's it. It's available for questions if there are any from anyone. Okay. I'm going to read the resolution. <coughs> uh, the second reading resolution for the authorization to proceed with the implementation for jail replacement project be resolved that Kuching, that Kuching County State of Minnesota intends to proceed with the project scope of work as identified by the County Jail Project Oversight Committee, whereas the County Board has established a jail project oversight committee to assist the county with a plan for the replacement of the existing county jail. Statement of purpose. The county board has established a jail project oversight committee to work on a plan to address concerns expressed to the county from the Minnesota Department of Corrections and has worked for the past year on a plan for a new jail. Whereas the jail project oversight committee recommends building a new jail to reduce recidivism, increase community safety, and reduce long-term costs while improving health and the health and well-being of our community, whereas the County Board has reviewed the proposal for a 40-bed, approximately 22,700 square foot jail located at the existing County Government Service site location, whereas on March 8, 2022, the County selected ICS to provide program management services for the development of a plan, scope, and construction of County facilities with final project approvals directed by the County Board. Whereas a two-part contract was executed with ICS on May 10, 2022, Part A being planning and scope development, and Part B, uh, once the county provides authorization to proceed with the project, is to provide the necessary professional services for the design and construction and management of a jail and modification of county buildings as specified. Whereas once construction drawings are completed, it is the county board's intentions to put the project construction contracts out for public bidding per Minnesota statute. Whereas bonding has been authorized by the county board for a maximum principal amount of $20 million for the jail replacement project authorized June 7, 2022. Whereas $10 million in jail bonds have been secured by the county in August of 2022. Now therefore be it resolved by the Coochie County Board and the state of Minnesota as follows. Authorization to proceed with the jail replacement project. The county board authorizes administration to officially enter part B of the jail replacement project with ICS and move forward with necessary steps including proceeding with remaining project funding, design, and construction of the jail replacement. And with that, that's what we will be approving this resolution to move forward and begin the process. So it's a big step for the county and appreciate uh, Kent and, and ICS for kind of leading us there. We have been working on this for quite some time, uh, probably a year and a half at least, uh, maybe before that even kind of assessing the actual needs uh, of, of the county. Uh, so uh, this is uh, a step in the right direction again and uh, a necessary step as well. So um, <clears throat> with that, uh, any comments? Hearing no comments, uh, Chair will accept a motion I'll to adopt. Motion. Thank you, Commissioner Roach. I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Hill. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. And we'll get the signature pages and stuff uh, after and take them with you or whatever, or whatever we're going to do. So thank you again. Uh, next up is Kuching County Television Maintenance Contract. Come on up, Mr. Yes. Irby. Hi. Hello. My name is Lee Irby, and 
I've been taking care of the five towers for Kuchichin County yes, since, since 1977. Yes. <laughs> Quite a while. I'm, uh, I've got uh, Josh, Ur Josh Urban here, up North Electric, and he would like to take over the county's TV towers at a little, sh little bit increase in price. Currently, I've been doing it for 6,800 a quarter. He's going to do it for 7,500 a quarter, which is a couple hundred dollar a month increase. He's got people who can climb. He's got uh, all the proper. Will have all the proper licenses to do it. And I'd like the board to take my contract, change his name, and transfer it over to him. And I'd also like to overlap some time so I can mentor Josh and his employees on what needs to be done, so on and so forth. So I'd like basically an overlap of one quarter of my services to train them in to do it. And the county's been involved in TV since about 68. Been in a long time. And in town here we provide 17 programs and we provide, there's towers all over the county. You ask me questions, whatever. How many towers do we have? Five. Five. Okay. Five towers. And two of the towers belong to Cooch. One of the tower at Northrum belongs to North Itasca. The tower at uh, Fairland belongs to um, uh, uh, not Minnesota Power, although they're there, to uh, uh, Minn Kota, and then the tower at uh, uh, Big Falls belongs to the city of Big Falls. We pay the city for the electricity rent to the tower in the building. So we actually own t only own two towers, of which the tower in the falls has a lot of sheriff's equipment on it. So even if you bought, bailed out of the TV, you'd still be involved with that tower just for law enforcement communications. So ask me questions. <laughs> I'd like to introduce Josh. He's uh, I brought him up to speed as much as I can. I'd like him to start as soon as possible. I basically want to retire and do a few other things. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for all your great service over the years. Uh, you've done a fantastic job and amazing job, honestly. You know, so I appreciate you wanting to move on to other things. And uh, you know, I'm sure you've climbed thousands and thousands of miles of. Of towers, right? So one year I put sixty thousand miles on my vehicle, not just in Cooch, but I took care of Ely, um, all over the northern part of the state. I still currently do Roseau and Lake of the Woods and stuff in Itasca and Red Lake and some other things. Right. But, right. but anyway, that's besides the point. Right. <laughs> well, I know it's appreciated service. I know the folks surely truly like this here too, out in the county. That I, I always hear the story of well, we, we turned it off over to your season once, and the phone phone. <laughs> lit up over the over uh, uh, the, that weekend uh, why why it didn't work so uh, and I know with the technology improving and, and satellites and things like that but I still I still really think it's a good service and to provide to folks and you actually get some pretty good pretty good stations out of that too so we got uh, 17 channels here programs in town right. and actually the trend for television I'm involved with uh, you know a lot of groups that I intend the trend for television is free over the air TV and streaming free over the air is for your local channels streaming is for your specialty the satellite companies and the cable companies that don't get into internet are actually threatened so I'm just looking you know, yeah. and then this the, what's the term of this contract uh, well if you if you got a copy of the contract it's renewed yep. annually automatically so it just continues as long as you know you, you board renews it annually and I haven't raised prices since 2016, so I'm kind of behind. <laughs> it's been a while. So anyway, I'd like a motion for the board to move on. Josh, you want to say anything? No, I'm really excited for uh, taking this over. I've worked with Lee on a few projects. And I heard about this, and this would be a great opportunity for our business to grow and do other things. Grant Joe, yeah, absolutely appreciate you taking this on. I know it's an important role, and I know Lee worked on it for a while. Uh, I don't know when he actually really wanted to retire, but I know he's think, been thinking about it for a while. So. <laughs> I think about a year and a half. We've gotten a lot of grants from the federal government to put in new equipment at no cost to the county. Right. It's been in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, and I've and I've applied for all those grants. Right. So you know, and you probably some of you aware of that. Yes. Yes. I'm sure, Betsy is. <laughs> well, you certainly appreciate everything. Looks good with the contract. Excellent. Well, thank you, Lee, and thank you, Josh. Um, Anything else to add? Sure. No, other than sooner you do the contract, I'll, uh, I'll be training him in, and I'd like to overlap, like I say, for a quarter. Okay. Just to mentor them and train them in on what needs to be done. Yeah, excellent. Very appropriate. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Uh, wishes of the board? I'll make the motion. <clears throat> I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Roche. Thank you, Commissioner Hill. Uh, any discussion? 
Hearing no discussion, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you, thank you, Serbian. Thank you. Josh, welcome. Yes. Um, and next, next up is a water level committee update. And uh, we have. We're trying to outnumber you. <laughs> <laughs> you sit here. The hot seat. The hot seat, absolutely. <laughs> hey, come on up. Um, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourselves yep. and kind of where you are on, this, on the committee and things like that. Great. Well, I'm Doug Francho, and I'm on the uh, International Rainy Lake of the Woods Watershed Board, and I'm the U.S. co-chair of our Citizens Advisory Group. And the Citizens Advisory Group, Eric will introduce himself as a member of that. Um, our role is to be a connection point between the communities and the watershed board as much as possible, keep a finger on the pulse of the community and identify issues that uh, the community is concerned about. And we've dealt with, obviously, water levels, but also emergency response and other kinds of, of concerns. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll hand it over to Pam. I'm Pam Tamivi, and uh, by day, I'm the district administrator for the Kuchiching Soil and Water Conservation District. <clears throat> and then uh, uh, my other hat is a public member of the International Rainy Lake of the Woods Watershed Board, and also uh, the board member to the Water Levels Committee. And uh, Doug reached out uh, in response to a request uh, for kind of an update uh, on where we are looking this spring, uh, concerns over maybe uh, coming off of our historic flood last year, where do things sit this year, and understandable uh, to um, address the board and, and provide that update. I'll leave it. I'll, I'll pass it over to Eric here. Okay. Um, I'm Eric Johnson, and as Doug mentioned, I sit on the Community Action Group um, Citizens Advisory Group. group. Yeah. We'd like to I, be I, active, I always forget all the, all the acronyms. <laughs> um, and I am brand new, so <laughs> yeah, you, you can't fault me for that. Um, but uh, no, I'm here today just um, as the chair of the Rainy Lake Property Owners Association just to answer any questions. Um, that the uh, commissioners might have as far as um, our membership and the folks who are actually impacted by uh, these floods and, and, the, and the water. So, If I could uh, kind of start, I have two, two things, one related and one not. Uh, Jason, the, the chair, yes, and sir. I talked about um, a, a, a program from the <coughs> Uh, School of Public Health at the University that we're putting on through the Community Extension Committee on which I sit about mold remediation awareness training and I think in your packet you have a copy of our brochure and we've been promoting that it'll be a webinar on April 11th in the morning with a, a very experienced mold expert I didn't know there were such things but of course there is um, who will go over a lot of concerns and issues, and I think even more importantly, will go over resources available to communities dealing with mold and the risk of mold in our increasingly wet environment. So uh, that was number one. Number two, I wanted to make a quick comment. Eric is a new member on the community advisory group. As an individual, but also as uh, head of the Rainy Lake Property Owners Association. And we on the committee are making a concerted effort to get all of, or as many of the property owner associations as we can in the watershed on the citizens group. So there's a, a much more direct and uh, uh, common connection between the watershed board and the property owners associations who are obviously a large group of very concerned citizens. So I, I kind of wanted to make sure that County Commission is aware that as part of our efforts to uh, reach out into the communities, be more accessible, and also be a, a more useful conduit to the board as a whole about how the communities are feeling, that that's a, an effort we're making. 
So now I'm going to turn it over to our resident water level expert. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Doug. Um, so I handed out just three pieces of paper, and I won't you know, go over them in their entirety, but I wanted them uh, to provide them at least for some reference. The first sheet here with all of the text on it is really a compilation of where the target levels were set, what the Water Levels Committee did on March 10th. The blue kind of two-sided sheet is really just the uh, deviation or uh, I should say a temporary revision to our allowable range in the Rainy Lake target zone or the roll curve. And the third map is just where we are with water levels as of this morning. So those are the three pieces of information that are in front of you. And on the, on the front sheet with all the text, uh, the highlights, uh, and we can, I can certainly read it in its entirety, or I can, you know, I'll just start off by giving some of the highlights. On March 10th, uh, the Water Levels Committee is charged by the uh, International Joint Commission, or the IJC, to make a decision. Previously, we were required to make a decision on whether or not we would be um, targeting that, uh, which was formerly known as the high-risk rule curve. It's an unfortunate name. Uh, we had good intentions when it was uh, pr when it was put forth in 2018 as part of the rule curve review, um, but it has created some confusion as to wh what it can actually do in, uh, at different input levels. So uh, we asked based. Coming off of last year's flood, we asked the IJC if they would allow us to essentially work within the full uh, range. So we have a normal roll curve range, then there was kind of a little shift over, which is that little red dotted line, and but there was kind of a go, no go date. Uh, and that created a lot of confusion. Uh, it also reduced a little bit of our flexibility uh, should conditions change after that March 10 deadline. So um, there are good reasons for kind of having that date and it's the, the responsiveness of the basin, uh, how quickly dam operators can, uh, can affect change uh, depending on how much is coming in. But we, uh, they've given us this year to um, to see how that works, and uh, so we really appreciate that. So on March 10th, based off of the current conditions and the forecast at the time, we directed dam operators to target the lower third of each band for both Rainy and Namakin. So if you're looking at your map there, or at your rule curves, that lower section, the lower third. Um, at present, Namakin is in its target range, and, and I, I'm sorry, I should say we set that target for the dam operators to achieve by March 31st. So we set a goal of by March 31st, we want both lakes to be in the, in the lower third of their respective rule curve bands. And uh, so Namakin is there, Rainy should reach their, um, they're a little bit above, although I think based off of today's map, it looks like they're, they're in the band, but, or in the lower third, but. Um, they will, so they're both in that, in that good range. Yesterday, uh, uh, the Water Levels Committee met with our flood forecasting groups. We met with the National Weather Service. <coughs> we met with dam operators, the Ministry of, uh, the Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources, um, and the Lake of the Woods Control Board. And we wanted to review what current conditions were uh, after, uh, and we do this periodically, I think that's kind of a highlight that we learned over last year, is that we're always meeting and working behind the scenes, but we didn't do a good job of communicating exactly what we were doing and how often. So uh, we appreciate working with Doug and uh, with a, um, with, you know, with Eric now as, as part of that kind of that bridge uh, to get the word out as to what is actually happening because in the absence of information folks you know are left to figure it out on their own and it's not usually a, a good picture so um, we appreciate that feedback and uh, and looking for where we can improve that communication piece so yesterday after reviewing where the current targets are or where the current conditions are at what happened with those uh, two significant snowfalls in March uh, things are much different today than they were 
on March 10th. So we had um, a lot of discussion. The uh, National Weather Service is, is communicating that there is an elevated, that the risk for flood has increased in elevation based off of the, just the, the enormous snowpack, uh, particularly in the rainy headwaters. It's, uh, as we go west, it's not as, as significant, it's not as above normal, but it is significant uh, in the headwaters. And so looking at all of those current factors, there's something we call SWE, which is snow water equivalent, which is much more important than just the depth of snow. So the snowpack itself isn't as important as how much water is contained in that those so many inches of snow because then that translates right into that that runoff. Um, one of the good points that was brought out in our discussion is that we have very little to no frost in a lot of the areas. So very very different from last year where we were looking at you know 18 inches of frost in a lot of areas. So we are happy that that has um, that that. The snow, that the soil would have a more responsive ability to absorb uh, as that freshet or that spring runoff starts to happen. Um, another good thing working in our favor, at least in the short term, is that it's been freezing at night, which has been slowing and stopping the melt, and then warming up but not too crazy in the daytime. So the melt has been continuing to go at a slower rate, which is a good thing for that rush of, of, uh, of melt, but it does put us at a risk for, as, as spring continues to delay, as we saw last year, as spring delays, it does increase our risk of a rain on snow event. And that is, you know, something that we just have no way to predict. Um, that would be great if we could get that prediction, but uh, we, we we appreciate the 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 18 to 14 day out, uh, forecast, but beyond three, four, five days, it's you know things can change so drastically that it's it's a tough call. So at the end of all of that, and that was a lot of you know kind of a background, but based off of all the discussion, with one last discussion point, feeling that if we were to retarget, what is the concern that you know we. We here, as Doug um, mentioned, we're very connected to our uh, community groups, the resort owners, and that's both on Namakin and Rainy. And Namakin has um, expressed their concerns over you know, levels for fishing opener that mm -hmm. second week of May. So we're always kind of looking at that as well. And it also highlights how many things that the lake is used for, the lakes are used for, and that we manage for. Wild rice, fish spawning, you know, medicinal plants. It's it uh, navigation. There's a, a long laundry list, and so it's 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 a, a balancing act sometimes. But at the end of the day, we felt that lowering the target a little bit more was prudent, based off of National Weather Services and the other uh, information that we received yesterday. So we are now directing dam operators that by April 15. Um, to target the lower 25%. Um, the discussion was the concern, as I stated, that uh, what's our risk for maybe not refilling Namakin? Uh, the discussion yielded that due to the heavy snowpack in the rainy headwaters, that that will be coming straight in. So they're, they're, we feel there's a low risk of um, if, we don't, <coughs> if we don't get heavy rains, if we don't get a lot of precip in April. Um, it would be the caveat. So if we get the rains, you know, we're starting in a, in a good spot. If we don't, would we be able to refill the lakes? We think Namakin would be sufficient, like that would be able to refill because of the, what's coming out of the rainy headwaters. Rainy may be a little lower, uh, but our discussions with property owners and um, those that are engaged in the pre-spring uh, engagement as we look at the regulation plan have all indicated that their desire for a little lower would assist with dock repair, some shoreline issues, so um, that would not be uh, necessarily a bad thing. The one thing we do want to follow up with, though, as we make these targets and as conditions change, we meet very regularly to watch as things progress and change. 
we do reach out to our resource professionals, our fisheries, uh, because I know low water is sometimes desirable from a property perspective, um, but it can have negative impacts on the some of the other things that the lake is used for. So we just want to find that balance for everybody. So that was a long-winded answer for you, and I hope I touched on some of the questions that were um, that were being presented to you. Yeah, I believe so. Eric, do you want to add any comments from the property owners association? Yeah, for sure. Um, I just want to say I want to thank the water level committee because from a property owners association from where we were in years past to right now we've been very pleased with the response from the water levels committee and especially those concerns that property owners have and this targeting a lower rainy lake um, pleases us very much uh, low water is an inconvenience high water is a disaster um, we're currently submitting our responses and comments to the recently released flood report. Um, if you guys get a chance to read it and um, have trouble sleeping at night, uh, it's a great uh, thing to, to read. It is a pretty dense document. Thanks, it's still a draft. It's still a draft. <laughs> it's a draft. Your um, comments will be well my, taken. My, my point is, is that it is a great snapshot to what happened. It's a very scientific document, so it does make it um, for a uh, ding dong like me to try and read it a little difficult. but. Uh, um, we're submitting our comments to it um, with some real actionable items that I'm sure will be well taken because the Water Levels Committee um, historically has taken our comments to heart in the past and we're really pleased with that and want to say thank you. Um, it is something, as far as those actionable items go, it's something I would be welcome to share with uh, the commissioners because um, some of it is up to you guys because you're where the rubber meets the road for a lot of these issues. Um, but with that, um, yeah, I'm always available if you guys have any uh, questions from property owners or any like property owners uh, standpoint, um, or I'm always available to give you my opinion too. So, and Mr. Chair, if I could just follow up with one last item <clears throat> that I mentioned the pre-spring engagement that we have to to solicit local input on conditions. Yep. I just want to mention that there will be a second public engagement on April 11th. It'll be a webinar and we will again look at conditions. We will again look at any, um, any revised uh, targets that maybe are necessary and see what's happened. So April 11th, I believe it's 7 p.m. Uh, for this one. The yeah. first one we held was noon. This time we wanted to hit folks if maybe they f folks were working. So, sure. um, and Betsy has all my contact. If, if you have any folks asking, just send them my way or Doug's way. <laughs> or Eric's way. <laughs> and I could just, before you guys latch on to us, um, one of the discussion points that is emerging is we have a flood report, what happened last year. But what's really impactful is lessons learned, how are we changing, what can we do to help. And I expect the communities will see, a, in addition to the significantly increased transparency, if you will, of, of the Water Levels Committee in their process. We are also working hard to do things like make access, there's a tremendous amount of information. Finding it, however, isn't always the easiest thing. So we're working very hard with the National Weather Service to come up with, in essence, faster uh, connections via the social media and the internet to get right to the data that, that is useful. So that that is uh, one thing. But in addition, the Citizens Advisory Group is pushing increasingly to, if it's another chapter or a separate report, to be more formal about what did we learn in the last flood? What does that imply? And, and I can give you a, a snapshot, uh, inside look, it's gonna imply transparency to the process and a resiliency in the communities because we know it's going to be wet. We know we're going to get floods. We don't know how deep they'll be. But the more the community can be in a resilient mode instead of a surprise mode, the better it will be for all of us. So those are, I think that's about all we know. That's all we know today. <laughs> Tomorrow. We will be looking at doing a um, more condensed, uh, easy read uh, recap of that post-flood report once it's been all 
revise. So I, I hear your comments on sometimes technical documents don't always feel public friendly, uh, and it's hard with so much data. But um, that was also brought up that once that's all complete, we will look at kind of a Reader's Digest version, if you will, of making this much easy, more easily digestible. So. And in that, we you'll, hear you. You'll you'll see that we've shifted from high risk rule curve and emergency stuff to spring planning, because we really don't know what's going to happen. So it's about spring planning for the freshet based on the best uh, weather uh, information that we have. Thanks for the opportunity to come in and share with you. Well, thank you. Thank you all for, for showing up here. I think it's important to let the community know what's going on, you know, and especially in light of our recent past years of things going on that, you know, are out of our control uh, to, to most of the extent. You know, there may be little little things here and there, but, you know, overall, I think you can only you can only drain out so fast. So, um, But I really appreciate you being here and, and, and updating all of us and, and sure. the community. And uh, I, th I think you're on the right on the right track with property owners associations and you know trying to keep those folks informed yeah. um, and you know get some of those some of that input and then also your spring meeting with your public input. That's a great idea as well. And follow up is is excellent as well. So um, just kind of get through this stage of things here, I guess. You know, with the you know it gets very concerning when you see a foot of snow. Yeah. You know, after last year, and then you see another you know six eight inches of snow, and then you maybe see some more after that. And like you say, then you get into the, the April, the rainy season, and it's it's a little concerning, you know. So mm -hmm. kind of your heart skips a beat, and, and uh, you think, you know, what, what's next? You might say so. I will say that the public responded to the National Weather Service's uh, outreach for more observers because the more data they have, the better predictions and assessments on the ground they can make. And so there's something called Coco Raz, and it's a, a community volunteer group of weather observers. They collect snow data, they melt that down to get that snow water equivalent, and all of that data is critically important to the National Weather Service's ability to effectively give us, you know, what are we projecting, what is out on the ground, how does that measure against historic. So um, keep promoting if, if there are still folks that would like to be involved in that on the ground data collection again just reach out to any of us and we'll get them connected with National Weather Service. The community advisory group is getting geared up to really push that because if you see the maps there are a lot of gathering points a lot of participants down along the North Shore and there are some up through the Northeast part there's one or two on the Canadian side. Right. And so there are large gaps mm -hmm. in coverage. And the more we can get, the better the data. And, and you're also using new technology for overflights, which can help as well. So yeah. and that's been identified as a priority for the Property Owners Association as well. Mm -hmm. so. Just one quick question. you have a website that people can click on and link to? or, or? Mm -hmm. That is what I think Doug is alluding to, is that we are working with, um, International Joint Commission has employed uh, Kathy Lee. She is yeah, our com uh -huh. yep, our communications person, and very, um, she's holding us to the fire to say, you know, as an average person, this is what I would want to see, and so I think that is kind of in development. In the interim, um, I, I think like even the Soil and Waters website could house a lot of, you know, Quick clicks, but National Weather Service um, has a great rainy, rainy basin site. So I will follow up with Betsy on um, how we can uh, direct folks uh, more easily to get that information. Um, yeah, if we have a common link, maybe we could have yeah. Yeah, one of our problems. Yes, has been that to date, it has to go through the International Joint Commission in Washington. Then you have to find us in their website, and then you find us, and you got to find that. And so we've yeah. raised that as a significant yeah. problem. Yeah. And uh, as I said earlier, there's a tremendous amount of information it's, finding it yeah. sometimes. <clears throat> it's just it's, it's tough to find that, that that one-stop shop. And the Property well, Owners Association is. also has done quite a good yeah. job of. of uh, cutting through that yeah. to get to. I mean, if you go to our Property Owners Association, Association website, it has links out to all of those of other pieces of information. That's a good point. Yeah, absolutely. Thank We're you. working on it, we'll and we appreciate yeah. being part of a team, because it really is yeah. a team member. So, all right. Thank you all very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Next up is uh, Crown Key approved the 2021 uh, Stone Garden Grand. Yep. Is there any questions on it? No, oh, that's just, just under 150,000. And this again, that goes for equipment and overtime. Yep, there will be some equipment in there. Um, it's recently the the grant is kind of gearing more towards the hours, boots on the ground. Sure. Um, and, but we still get a lot of equipment and help throughout the years. We've uh, received, I mean, four wheelers, snow wheelers, lots of things that have kind of saved the county a ton of money. So it's a good grant. And, Grant and it's been budgeted, so we're all good. Yep, we're all good. Um, a motion to approve. I'll make a motion. Thank you, Commissioner Hill. I will second. Thank you, Commissioner Roach. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll call the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. The next item is the addition. Much, much smaller grant, but nonetheless. On the last uh, bullet and water grant, yes, that is water. And again, it's just an annual grant, no county funds, Excellent. or anything like that. So. Excellent. Uh, wishes of the board. Nice Thank you, Commissioner Hill. And I will second. Thank you, Commissioner Roach. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Right, thank you. Thank you. I just need a signature on that. And next up is uh, Public Health and Human Services. And <coughs> some approvals. Yes. <coughs> we have three purchase of service agreements um, to approve. The first one is, and they can be all done together, right? But I'll just explain them. Um, the first one is the Lutheran Social Service Guardianship Purchase of Service Agreement. That is where we um, pay for people to have guardians who have no other guardians available, no family members, relatives, or friends that can do that for them. Um, we don't have a lot of those. Um, we work really hard to get family members or, or someone that knows the person well to be involved, but sometimes there just isn't anybody. And then the second one is the um, ODC, Supported Employment Purchase and Service Agreement. That's the agreement with the Occupational Development Center for people with disabilities to be able to be employed in the community and that we have a small number of people that we, we pay for that for them if there's no other resources. And then um, the third one is the ODC Day Support Services. That's also with the Occupational Development Center, and that is for services for providing disabled folks with um, training for independent living skills and just socialization and, and some of those things that they, they don't um, get a lot of other places. So, and they are um, yearly renewals and um, have had no changes to them. Any questions on the renewals? Mm -hmm. If there's no questions, I will accept the motion to approve. I'll make a motion. Thank you, Commissioner Roach. I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Hill. Any discussion? Anything further to add? Mm -hmm. Thank you for all your work on this and getting us all together. Uh, hearing no other discussion, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. And we have. And then we have two burials. Two burials. All right. I'll accept the motion for the burials. I'll make the motion. Thank you, Commissioner Hill. And I will second. Thank you, Commissioner Roach. Any discussion? Uh, hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. You're ready, Mel? Is matter on? Yeah. We're a little early, but yeah, I'm okay with it. If you're okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing this morning, Matt? Good. Good. 
And you're going to appoint a couple of, recommend a couple of appointments for the solid waste? Yes, yeah, so that we have a solid waste advisory committee. Uh, we meet as needed. Uh, we're going to have some items that we need to review uh, this year uh, with uh, upgrades. We're upgrading a solid waste software. Uh, we're proposing a replacement of the scale if we can get it done, depending on contractor availability, of course. But uh, And then also looking at other improvements at our facility that may help us long term from a uh, management and, and cost perspective. So just want them to review some of our plans and, and make recommendations, obviously, to the county board before we move forward with any of those things. Uh, we had already talked about the software, and I think that was already approved to go forward with, uh, but uh, there's some other things we'd like to review before we make the final purchases. And so we need to appoint and fill out that Solid Waste Advisory Committee. Uh, previously, uh, as an industry representative, uh, uh, we had the uh, uh, environmental uh, engineer from uh, Boise uh, and he left the area so now uh, David Birchall is in that position so we'd like to appoint him and then as a contractor representative uh, we'd like to appoint Dave Harder onto the committee so that's what I'm requesting to fill those those vacancies with those two uh, that have said that they would be willing to do it. And in addition to that, I, I would just say that in addition to that, uh, we have a planning and zoning uh, representative uh, that needs to be filled, and we're planning to, at the next meeting, uh, request the Planning and Zoning Commission to appoint somebody. Uh, and I don't know if I need, if you guys uh, want to approve whoever they appoint without knowing who it is, I assume they would appoint whoever wanted to do it and would volunteer. And then also, uh, SWCD is appointing one of their board members uh, to the uh, onto that committee also, and I think that's happening on Monday. So uh, if you would, I, I don't know if we can pre-approve those without their names, I guess. It's a question I have. Betsy did. Uh, Betsy walked out. <laughs> so. Well, I think we should have the names okay. available. Okay, wait until we, we don't. So I'll bring that later. Then. I think so. Okay. Yeah, maybe if we could do that. Yeah, that's weeks. fine. Yep, that's fine. It's not a, not, I don't think it's a big deal. So. And that's going to be for the planning and zoning, you said? One and from planning and zoning, one from uh, SWCD. We have like 10 members. Are those internal appointments? Yes, so it's from their boards. Oh. So from the planning and zoning board, somebody within the planning and zoning board would be appointed by the planning and zoning commission. And then uh, one from the SWCD board. Well, they, they, they could do that appointment, then we would just do, we would just do approval beyond that, right? Uh, yeah, whatever you guys want to do, it doesn't make yeah, a difference. That's what you do. So we'll just list them as SWC appointee and plan is only appointee. Okay. Great. Um, anything else on the solid waste advisory appointments? No. Okay. All right. Got all the information. Looks like a couple of good. Couple of good persons. Yeah, so. anytime we can get people to volunteer to be on these boards, it's a great thing. <laughs> it's absolutely. And thanks, thanks to them. So, uh, wishes of the board. I'll make a motion. Thank I'll you. second. Thank you, Commissioner Hill. Thank you, Commissioner Roach. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor, say to five, saying aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, man. I'll try to bring more paper next time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is Dean or oh, there he is. Yeah. How are you doing, Dean? Good. And Dean's happy today. There's a repair made. Uh, that we're excited about and happy about, and he's happy about, I'm sure. Yeah, correct. And he got <laughs> some doors that we've discussed a little bit before. And yeah. Um, uh, first thing, I'd like to know if uh, I got the bill for the repairs that were made in the the, uh, the uh, broken sewer in the jail. And um, I was wondering if I could um, get the board to pay the bill ra rather than my budget. Only because uh, it's uh, it's a sizable bill, and 
if I I do have the money in my budget, I could do it. But then I would it would be a huge impact for me to uh, along the rest of the year. I'd have to cut back on a few things to make things meet at the end of the year. So um, I was wondering if there might be a can or something that we could uncover out in the yard or whatever to pull a few funds out of there to sinking building. Sinking building. Okay. Uh, to help me out with that, rather than taking it out of my own budget, so. It's intended for emergency services. Excellent. That's a good good use of it. You're yeah, and, and it's for uh, six thousand six hundred and forty dollars eighty six cents. So well worth every penny. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. And so that'd be great. So. Is that all done now? Complete. Yep. Concrete over. Correct. Yeah. Hey, hey Mr. Chair, this was an unplanned. Yeah, this is a this is a surprise event so actually. So unbudgeted, yeah. Ongoing for a while, but when it sounds, you just don't know where the problem was. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It took a while to narrow it down and then right. pinpoint it. So great. Um, motion to include uh, pulling a sixty-six forty-six out of sinking building. I will motion. Thank you, Commissioner. I have a second. Any discussion? Thanks for figuring that out and getting here to get Yeah, it took a lot of took a lot of minds and whatever and a lot of looking and like that, but we got it. So that's great. Really good. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing the call the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion carries. And the next item is the doors. Yes, the correct. Selling, selling port doors. Yes, these are the three doors that we need to replace in the in the uh, Sally Port area of the law enforcement center and I do have two bids on doing that I contact I had a, a total of four people that I contacted and had looks to supply bids and um, I've looked at one but I haven't looked at the other and so I'll just dish these off to the to the board and you can go ahead and throw your eyes on it and um, and to act on your wishes or ask any questions that you might have. Did you open these? I saw the one only because it was emailed to me to my desktop. The other one was handed in a sealed envelope. So. Christmas. You can open them. You don't need to. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is a budgeted expense on my uh, budget. The only thing is, I'm going to run short. I know I will. Um, I have 15000 budgeted for doing this project. And then that was before we got hit with the inflation and all that other jazz. So. Uh, Myers, this one here is from Myers Glass. This one here is from Up North Builders. Um, they're identical, identical quotes. They are? So, no, no, I mean, so far as the, the need. Oh, order? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. We, both parties were here, took a walk through, asked all the questions. I told them what we needed. Okay. Any specs or anything at that point were discussed. So they, they both knew what was going on. Okay, the, the one estimate is from Myers Glass is, is $26,487. Uh, the other quote is from Up North Builders at $25,112. I guess I we have normally would go through Dean or, or how Mr. Chair. Yes. If I may ask a question. Yes. The garage door openers are these the reverse ones? So if they're coming down and like somebody goes underneath, will it stop and reverse? Yeah, that? correct, yeah. That's yeah. what it is? Okay. Yes, correct. It's a safety safety device kind of thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, these all have uh, the automatic eyes or the eye sensors for the Perfect. for the tires and things like that or whatever might fall in the door. I'm just asking because the safety committee class. Yeah, sure. So with that, you said you have around fifteen thousand. I've got fifteen thousand budgeted for this project. So it looks like it's a little over ten thousand more than than expected, I guess. Yeah. So that's a consideration. The doors have been there since the beginning of the. Yes, they are. They're the originals, and I've replaced one already as new, uh, two years ago or whatever it was. So how many doors is this? I guess you know. Three. Three. Are there four doors then? Three doors that we're going to replace. Over on the property, there's a total of four doors. Okay. Yeah. That includes everything, the openers and the rails and all that. Stuff. Yeah. I, th I think we looked at them 
they've been giving you a little trouble too. Yeah, they're wore out, and they they don't the the limits on them don't hold anymore. The the shafts are spun out. How old are them doors? Huh? The 40, 42 years old or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Those are some good doors. Yeah, they were overhead door company, you know, back yeah, in the day. Yeah, not fund it at Oak Well, we're thinking I, uh, the wishes of the board here, but we, we, we could, you know, put the additional funds into the door. I know the doors are 40 years old. I know you've had issues with them. We've talked before about the issues. and. And they have lasted quite well, um, but I think there's a end of life on, on some of those doors as it is. So, um, well, discussion on the doors. Are we still going to be using the part of the building in the jail? I mean, so to speak. Uh, I would assume that would be a storage at the very least, um, at the very so least in the future. So, need it used, I guess, how thick are these? A three-inch thick door, two-inch thick door? Do you know? Um, you know what? I don't know for sure, Rick. They're something? insulated. But, um, yeah, right now the the one is the Sally Port door that the the officers come in with prisoners and whatever to gain access to the elevator. The other door is uh, for one of the squad trucks, um, or the other door is for the squad trucks. And then uh, the other one uh, is in front of the, or lets the uh, emergency uh, boat or uh, snowmobiles and stuff like that go in there back and forth for emergency purposes. Mr. Chair? Yes. You could take the lead to discuss this if you'd like, since really what he was asking him was the ability to Well, that's, that's what I was going to ask if we would get maybe. maybe Questions of the door, thickness of the door, things like that. I don't think that's pertinent. Sure, sure. Just make sure that apples to apple on comparisons okay. with the two folks. Mm -hmm. um, neither one of them are saying anything about if they're three inch door, two inch door. Okay. Neither one of them are saying either anything about that. They're just giving a size. Would that be okay to? Oh, sure. Kind of hold up mm -hmm. for a couple of weeks. Yep. Okay. If you maybe get more information on, on the door and the spec of the door and window, okay. I imagine there's no windows in it. But it would, uh, yeah, yeah, I can give these to these. Yeah, okay. if, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, so, do you need any approvals or anything for to move forward with that, or just more information? I guess we would really, I guess it would determine the information you get on which 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 one person you go with, I guess, yeah, or which company, I guess. So. Okay. Um, and you're you would like to know the thickness of the door. Okay. I'll find that out. Okay. I, I think we could probably pull it out of. If approved, it would probably come on admin or not admin, but uh, sinking building as well. So okay, okay. So we could have a motion for the bids since that's what it was requested. Oh, well, we could. Yeah, let's. Um, it's kind of like a back motion. Well, let's let's yeah, we'll we'll authorize uh, uh, director, public director to seek bids, which we already have, but we'll we'll just go through the formality of having a motion to authorize. The bids. Uh, oh, motion. Thank you, Commissioner Hell. I'll second it. Thank you, Commissioner Roach. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor, say goodbye. Say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Who would I relay that information to then when I find out? To, to the chair? Okay. Sure. Yeah, we. Or we, Betsy? Yeah, Betsy. Okay. Yep. We get the information, get everything that you think we might need for when's the next meeting. To be able to compare. March 11th, and then you can come back to the board with your RBA. I'm sorry. Yes. All right. Okay, I'll get it to Betsy then. Yep. Okay. All right. We'll come back with an RBA. Thank you. So okay. For work bid. All right, you can have these. Yeah. I've got one other thing that's not on the agenda. Should I direct that to Betsy, or it's a, it's Lee is here. Regards to that, and maybe he could just tell you. Okay. That'd be tired of seeing me. No. <laughs> oh, I, I, I don't have to get Dave is here, the treasurer for the Logan Fire Department, and uh, I'm the chairman of the Logan Fire Department. We basically have a county phone in our building, basically for basically fire protection if it overheats, so on and so forth. You folks pay for that phone because it's your building. Training has been really awkward over the last couple of years. 
and we want to target training to certain issues which we can get on the internet. We don't have internet in your building there. We'd like the internet be supplied with, however, the county does other internets throughout the county, thinking you're going to get a better price than if, if we tried to do it. You know, and being you own the phone, it would be come in probably through Frontier on the existing phone. Dave, I don't know if you want to add to it, but we, we got special needs there that we feel. Yeah, basically, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, we got training we want to do through the internet. But we can't do it because we got no internet there for our volunteers. We're requesting you folks to add internet to the phone you already pay for. Is the internet available or, or accessible in the building now, or would it have to be brought into the building? Yeah, um, you know, that's kind of a gray area yet as we stand here today because I've been in contact with Frontier to, to try to find out, and they gave me a, a quote of $94 and some cents for a bundle of a phone and, and DSL. And um, I haven't heard much response since then. Um, I talked to them. Uh, to set this all up and then when we discovered that this is rental property and that maybe they should come forward and request this expense because it's I was going to tell Betsy that there would be another phone line showing up on our bill one day and then I, when I was telling her what it was about we looked at the agreement and it's a rental property and so therefore we, we kind of it was a gray area just who's going to pay the bill Right, because the contract does the lease state the lease contract states that the Loman Fire Department would be responsible for their own services, which is lights. I don't believe it lists telephone, but it does light the other services. But yeah, the, 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 the DSL and the phone, the phone is already there, and that's to the benefit of the building for a lot of reasons. The DSL would come in on that same phone number basically. And the line is the building is just 100 yards away. And I am as treasurer, I don't know how we pay the bill. Everybody else has Frontier DSL. Like I said, the building is right there. It's got to be available. Right. And you are paying for the phone now. We really, I don't think we can go to the phone company and say, we want DSL on a phone number that we don't own as a fire department. But you want the county to pay for the DSL? In addition, well, they already pay for the phone. I get that, but you, you're asking what what you're asking for is for the county to pay for internet services. At right. Well, we're, it would be ninety ninety dollars bundled. Right now, you're probably paying fifty dollars or something for just the phone. So it'd probably be another thirty dollars a month. And that's what we're asking for. Boy, or maybe need some more information on the availability. That just because a line's out there might not mean that it's available. I'm, I'm I'm not sure how that works here. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. And I think the actual cost of the phone that we're paying now, whatever that is, if it's yeah, no idea. fifty, whatever it is. But you know, to consider that if we did it for one, we'd have to do them for them all. You know, um, so we'd have to do that for every other fire department as well. So that that's the only kind of little bit of a little bit of a hold up we could maybe take a look at the contract and and if there's any other contracts that we have I don't know if there's any other contracts that are like this one but if we were to look at it maybe we could look into that contract and see and kind of maybe discuss it a little bit uh, internally here and then kind of go forward maybe Dean could get some information on the on the frontier availability uh, what it would cost to get it into the building um, as well as the you say if it's a $94 bundle you know what are we actually paying now? I say find that information out. We can have some discussion, and we can keep in contact with you, Lee, or, and yourself as well, if if, if you would like. So. Yeah, and, and be honest, I don't know what the phone bill is. Because we don't get it. And right, the reason right, the phone right, is in there is in the interest you own the building. It's for in the building freezing up or whatever. It protects your building. That's how initially we got the phone. Okay. We, we provided the equipment that does that. Okay. But you folks provided the communication to notify it. Okay, so if there were anything in the building, would we have to provide a computer or anything like that, or would that be kind No, of the computer we already have. Oh, you already the have. monitor we already have. We know what we want to do, but we want to use that for training purposes. Okay. The, the DSL. Okay. And like Dave was saying, how can, you know, we really don't want to get a separate item for another phone and another item for our fire department. It just seemed it would be silly if we, for thirty dollars we could uh, add it. I think there's some training funds available too uh, 
through grants through the state here they're proposing some training funds yes, for yes. very for rural areas there we could have actually have some of that training paid for maybe it's a grant and aid where we, we could have if that was written into a grant to say you know to pay for this phone line even if it's for a couple of years um, might be something that to look into you know we could certainly check into that I know I don't think it's actually passed through yet but I know they're proposing several different things to help out the more rural areas EMS ambulance fire things like that to help for this paid training because that's part of the problem getting volunteers is you can't give them anything so they volunteer and then you have to pay for out of your pocket to get trained and then right. you don't get any volunteers so that's well, kind of what and we want a target training that's available on the internet right. a lot of training we can go to and we can get grants for that right but that training isn't what we're, we're seeking but it's available on the internet okay so okay yeah dave can add to it i think you said it <laughs> <laughs> i talk too much <laughs> Well, we'll uh, definitely be in touch. We'll look, we'll look into that contract and we'll look into maybe we can research some of the grants and where they're at at the, at the state level. I know there's some stuff working through there. I, I couldn't speak to it specifically because there's so many of those things going through now, but I think there will be some good availability of some monies available that we could maybe look into as well. And then we'll discuss the contract and the, and the internet as well. So and get back to wonder both of you. Are you okay with that? Yeah. You're trying to, Dean, Dean is my go-to okay. for making this happen. <coughs> okay, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Any, anything else? Okay. No. I'm at this time, uh, I don't know, Karen, uh, if you just want to just a blip, we talked to Willie a little bit about the uh, emergency management um, type situations. I don't know if you touch base with you a little bit. About yeah, no, we uh, are you talking as it relates to potential spring flooding or is that yeah, just kind of a preliminary? Yeah, um, so we, me and Willie, have been in constant communication all year, but right. in a couple of weeks we will be meeting with our um, EOC staff internally. And I believe uh, you might be invited to the meeting as well. I think Betsy, just to have an after action review and then kind of where we're sitting. I was just talking to Pam, and I appreciate all the level, or all the work that the water level committee has done, um, and a lot of transparency. And you know, we're we're really at the mercy of what Mother Nature does. Where we prepare, and then we just have to react to whatever you know, whatever happens. I think as a county, we're in a much better position when it comes to the equipment. I think we're in a worse situation when it comes to volunteers and then actual county forces um, everyone's still burnt out from last year it was not a good experience for you know the high, i mean the highway department lost a month and a half of work at least so i think that's or more and so those will be those discussions i mean as you know things progress this spring kind of in even at a board level how do we want to respond to potential flooding you know in the future and we're still working through FEMA reimbursement as it is. And it's every day. Yeah, every, every day. day we so work on it, FEMA stuff. Yeah, so it's uh, like I say. I hope we don't have that, but rest assured, yeah, we're our emergency operations team is continually meeting on it. And, um, we'll be as prepared as we can be. So whatever happens, well, you but, yeah. I, that it's the fear I have is that just everyone's just going to be so drained out from last year and. You know, just I don't know what how if if we were to ask the public to engage in a a, um, a sandbagging operation, I don't know if we'd get anyone to show up. So yeah, that was a rough year last year yeah. for a lot of folks. Yeah. So. And we were lucky to get the National Guard to come up, um, even though they told us from the get go we're not coming, we're not coming. They didn't tell us. I should I should say it. They didn't tell us. We were informed. They're not coming, they're not coming, but then when we were making the ask and St. Louis County was making the ask, it changed. Um, if we face an incident by ourselves, I, I we'll continue to ask. But so yeah, we'll just we'll just continue to meet, continue to review from last year what went well, what didn't go so well, how can we potentially improve on it and just be ready should things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a that was a heck of a movement last year. Honestly, yeah. really a great commitment from everyone. So, yes. if I may say, uh, Mr. Chair, 
the emergency operations center did a fabulous job of keeping track of everything, of you know, making sure those contracts were signed, making sure we every T was crossed and I was dotted, so we had everything that we needed to get sent off to FEMA. And it was sure may have taken a little bit of time finding it here. We had a central place where we kept everything that everybody had access to, and it was can't say it was easy responding to FEMA, but all the information was there. So uh -huh. kudos to that. Yeah. And I think as EMC. as a county as a whole, a lot of us we learned a lot, and we're I, I I will say we're in a better place as a county. I think to respond at least on like um, our procedures and we we kind of have a little bit better knowledge of FEMA and you know things of that so I think we're in a better position that way with the know-how I just I really fear that if we ask the public to volunteer for sandbagging that we're not <laughs> we might not get anyone so I don't know. Now, did the county just get an award at the governor's lunch or something? The county, we were notified we were going to get an award, and I, they had to postpone that governor's conference. So, that I thought it was going to happen on the 24th or something. Was it emergency HSEM conference or something? Yeah, I don't know if that happened or not, to be honest with you. Okay. It was yeah. supposed to happen last Thursday, I think. Yeah. But, so. We'll even know if he was... Well, yeah, Willie's been on vacation out in California, though. So. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Before the flood. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to have a flood. Uh, no, I hope not. The way they're figuring it, it looks, if they're at the bottom end of the curve, that, that's a good thing. It is, and there's a lot of water in the basin. I, you know, luckily, when you, it's <laughs> not for the North Shore, but a lot of that heavy snowpack is going to drain towards Lake Superior, where we still have significant snowfall in the basin, but... I'd we, rather have a little bit lower level lake than yeah. lower level lake. <coughs> yeah, yeah. And if we can avoid seven inches of rain on frozen ground, I think we should be... Yeah. Famous last words, we should be okay. Well, they made perfectly good sense. You can go out in the middle out here and take a shovel, and you can dig a hole in the ground. Yep, exactly. There's, so there's basically no frost, yep. which will help the water dissipate yep. twice as fast. Yeah, and this, this type of weather, like we were talking earlier, you get a little uh, melt freeze, melt and freeze, yep. it definitely helps. Best way to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. So, thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, at any time, if anyone has any questions, reach out. And yeah, well, I just let everybody know that, got your eyes on it. Yep. And paying attention on what's going on, so. Yep, and another plug for Willie, he is fantastic. He, <laughs> he's bugging me all the time about it, so. <laughs> he truly likes what he does. He does, and you know, I, I'll say even regionally as a region, because he's got, uh, to some regional trainings and assisted them with their emergency operations centers as far as training new staff. So he's even confident that as a region, the region would be more able to help us in our response to so. Perfect, very good. Thank, thank you. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, at Sorry, this Kat. time, is there anybody here for public comment? I've got a question. Yes. When you start the construction of the groundwork for the new jail, what's going to happen with the flags and the stuff monument. out there? Because isn't that where the new complex is going to go? Well, they're going to move to the north. So it'll still be in that general area. Um, as, as the building is proposed now, the, the, the memorial area will be moved forward. So the memorial still looks similar to what it is now. Um, the sidewalks maybe won't be as long to get there. It'll be closer to 4th Street, I guess. So, so it will be saved and oh, yeah. put back. Thank yep. you. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, that's definitely going to be that's a great That's a great area there. So. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Um, any other public comment? Hearing none, I will ask a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. Are we good to go, <laughs> Betsy? Okay. okay. Sorry, what's that? All right, thank you, Commissioner Hill. Thank you, Commissioner Roach. All those in favor of adjourn, say aye. 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 Opposed? And we are adjourned.